Richard James will present Decimal Tutorial 2, Part A. We are about to perform this division process. However, generally when we have a situation like this and we are dividing, we opt to clear the decimals. However, we will not do this on this occasion. There is no need to clear the decimals as we will reserve that activity to when we are solving problems without the use of a calculator. The numerator is related to 23. We know that 23 is a prime number. Consequently, we expect that a harsh number like 351 dividing into it should give a horrible decimal but not necessarily. Sadly, we therefore go to the calculator, especially that there was no restriction given as to how we may arrive at the answer. The real test is actually writing the answer correct to two significant figures. Therefore, use the calculator writing all of the decimal places in the answer. So we will use our calculator because we are sure by the composition of these numbers that we will not get a relatively simple fraction or that the fraction will not be easily reduced. And in this particular case, we will write down all of the digits that are supplied by the calculator. Perform the operation and write down every digit supplied by the calculator. If we divide 0 0.023 by 0 0.351, we will get an answer approximately equal, although we have equal to 0 0.6552765. There we have it. In order to write the number correct to two significant figures, first locate the second digit in order of significance, beginning at the first non zero digit from the left. We are attempting to write this number correct to two significant figures. Therefore, we need to identify the second figure in order of significance and we will begin at the first non-zero digit to the left that is the first one that is not equal to zero so we have these two are zeros we begin right here one two so that is our second significant figure when we get there we check the digit that is next in order of significance, which is the one to the immediate right. The digit, which is the one next in order of significance, is greater than or equal to 5. As a matter of fact, it is a 5. Because it is greater than or equal to 5, we therefore add 1 to 5. So add 1 to this 5 and we get 6. Check this one. This is the one that we are interested in. We consult this one. It is greater than or equal to 5. We add 1 to this one. 5 plus 1 is equal to 6. And the other digits return exactly as they are. For decimal fractions, trailing zeros do not contribute to the value of the number they therefore do not have to be included. When we generally write a number correct to a particular number of significant figures, 
we have cases in which trailing zeros will have to be included in order that the value of the number may be retained or at least the answer will be an approximate value of the initial number however in this particular case the trailing zeros are not necessary because they do not affect the value of the number in any way this problem requires the reduction of fractions in the end in the end we will reduce fractions however there is a subtraction problem in the denominator we will go ahead and do the subtraction first with the exception of when the fraction is to be reduced we should treat the operations in the denominator and the numerator as if they are separately enclosed in brackets and separated by a division sign we have this large fraction bar here telling us that we are dividing all of what we have here into all of what we have here therefore this is a division problem if all of the operations here were on the same level as the operation implied by this division sign then we could pretty much go straight ahead and reduce the fraction because all of the operations are on the same level of importance however this large fraction bar is telling us that whatever we have here is being divided by what we have here therefore it is important that we complete all of the operations here and all of the operations here before attempting to divide and we will do this because we have an operation here that is not on the same level of importance as the operation implied by the fraction bar which is division but we have a multiplication here so multiplication and division are on the same level therefore although we have a tendency or the fraction bar is implying that we need to have all of this being divided by all of this which would also imply that we need to do this first and then do this if it were not for this negative sign that we have here all of the operations would be on the same level of importance and we could pretty much either reduce the fraction or do these operations first it does not matter because all of the operations would be on the same level as the division operation that is implied by this fraction bar but we have to take exception in this particular case because we have this subtraction sign therefore we will go back to our initial intention of at least considering that all of these operations are to be completed before the division process as a matter of fact we should treat the large fraction bar as if those operations above are enclosed in brackets and those operations below are enclosed in brackets and you know that we do operations enclosed in brackets first so treat them as if this is enclosed in brackets and this is enclosed in brackets that is what is implied by this fraction bar and if we have items enclosed in brackets we should really do the ones that are enclosed in brackets first but why do we then sometimes go straight ahead and reduce the fraction because when we have only multiplication and division 
all of the operations are on the same level of importance. Therefore, we do not have to separate one from the other. So there we have them as if they are enclosed in brackets. So we have this 3.5 multiplied by 0 0.07 and that is what we have in the numerator. In the denominator we have 2.5 minus 0 0.05. We will perform the operation that we have in the denominator first which is the subtraction. In the same way that operations in the numerator and the denominator of the fraction should be carried out first, we will begin on the next slide with the subtraction problem of the denominator. So let us take that subtraction problem that we have in the denominator and perform it first. The number that we are about to subtract from 2.5 has two places of decimal. For convenience and in support of simple logic and common sense, we will include another place of decimal, increasing the number of decimal places to 2. And we are doing that because we are subtracting from that number another number that has two decimal places. We will then place the other number below 2.50 with the decimal points vertically aligned. So align those decimal points vertically like that. Then we subtract but we will do that on the next slide. On the next slide we will carry out the subtraction process. We will go straight ahead and complete the subtraction process. We cannot take 5 from 0 so our first attempt in carrying out the subtraction process is to say 0 minus 5. But we cannot do that. Because we cannot take 5 from 0, what do we do? We will go to the next column. This one. Use one from that position and bring it to the less significant position. So, remove one from that 5. We have 4. And take that one and bring it to the next significant position. A digit from the more significant position is 10 times the digit in the less significant position. So, the digit that we remove here is 10 times a digit that is in this position. Therefore, when we bring this one from this position, we bring it here as 10. We are not saying that this is 10. But we can consider that it is 10 for convenience. But what we are doing is actually taking 1 from here. It is 10 times its value here. So 1 multiplied by 10 is 10. And we take the 10 and add it to the 0 and we get 10. So if we put the 1 here and call this 10, no harm is done. But we are not saying that it, that is what makes it 10. As long as we understand that what makes it 10 is that when we remove 1 from here, take it to the less significant position, it is 10 times its value here. Or we may say the one here is 10 times the value of the one that we have right here. Then we take that 10 and add 0 to the 10 and that still is 10. Therefore, we may say conveniently that we are subtracting now 5 from 10. So 10 minus 5 is equal to 5. Then 0 
from 4 or 4 minus 0 is equal to 4. And no doubt we align the point of the answer with the points that we have here. And we will do that for addition and subtraction problems. For multiplication and division problems, then we'll take other approaches that we will no doubt discuss in these tutorials. Finish up by saying 2 minus 0 is equal to 2. Now that we have completed the subtraction problem, all that we have now is multiplication. And then we have this large fraction bar, which really means that every single thing here is being divided by what we have here. Therefore, what we should really do is perform all of this first. Then we do the division. But why do we reduce the fraction instead? Because division and multiplication are on the same level of importance. We may do them any one we choose before the other. And our answer will be correct as long as we divide by what we need to divide by and we multiply by what we need to multiply by. So, we are saying here that we are about to reduce the fractions and conveniently we will eliminate the decimal places from both numerator and denominator. So we will eliminate all of the decimal places in this particular case. That we always do that when we are reducing fractions. So in our attempt to do that, we have one, two, three decimal places here, and we have two here. So we will choose to eliminate three. We have chosen to eliminate three places of decimal because the greater number of decimal places is 3 and those are present in the numerator if we focus on the denominator and only eliminate 2 we will have an additional 1 place of decimal in the numerator that we need to eliminate in the end so we'll just go straight ahead and eliminate the 3 places of decimal here and attempt to do the same here because if we only eliminate two here we will have another one here that we need to eliminate so go straight ahead one then we have another two eliminate those two so we have a total of three decimal places and we will attempt that in the denominator the denominator has only two decimal places therefore we will use a zero to account for the missing one in the denominator only two we need to eliminate three so we will use a zero so one two then we put the zero and then we have a third place of decimal and then we have completed that phase of the solution let us go straight ahead and reduce the fractions what will work greatly in our favor is if 2450 is actually a multiple of 7. Let us try it out. If it is, then we stand a chance of greatly reducing our problem. If it is not, then we are sure that we have multiples of 5 in both numerator and denominator. It would be very nice if 2450 were a factor of 7 because that would greatly reduce our problem why because we already know that any number that ends with a 5 or ends with a 0 is a multiple of 5 therefore 5 is a common factor of the numerator and denominator so all is not lost if 7 cannot go directly into 2450 but if it does 
that will greatly reduce our problem so 2450 divided by 7 is actually 350 it works and 7 into 7 is 1 no problem that greatly reduces our problem because apart from the fact that we already know that 5 is a common factor we have 35 here 350 here and it's obvious that 1 is 10 times the other 350 divided by 35 is equal to 10 reducing by a common factor of 35 all of 35 35 into 35 is 1 what do we know we will finish up as usual by multiplying the numerators and if we have denominators we only have 1 so 1 multiplied by 1 is 1 we only have 10 here so the 10 will go back multiply the resulting numerators 1 multiplied by 1 is equal to 1 and there is only one denominator so let us put that 10 back what is that answer we know that 1 tenth is 0 0.1 there and as I will clarify or just mention in another video coming up is that when we are dividing by powers of 10 like a whole number by a power of 10 then we will have decimal places or in this particular case a single decimal place the number of zeros in the power of 10 tells us the number of decimal places so we have only one zero here we will only have one decimal place right there take a look and it is quite obvious that I made a mistake in solving this problem let us first take a look at the nature of my mistake before attempting to solve the problem correctly my treatment of the problem was as if everything that follows the division sign is a part of the divisor that is the first thing to mention that my treatment was as if everything that follows this division sign is what we are dividing by so we I'm saying that we are dividing by all of this which is not the case like that so we are treating the situation as if this is enclosed in brackets and we are dividing by all of this that was in the same manner as if there were enclosed in brackets so we are treating the situation as if everything were enclosed in brackets what is wrong about that approach one there is no bracket in the original problem do not assume brackets if they do not exist or if the context of the problem does not strongly suggest that brackets should be included so that was the first one there is no bracket therefore we cannot treat it or should not unless otherwise strongly suggested we should not treat it as if it is enclosed in brackets because it's not and two multiplication and division are on the same level of importance therefore it should not mean that this division takes precedence over this multiplication or maybe this multiplication takes precedence over this division so that we need to do the multiplication first and then take the result and divide it into this so they are on the same level therefore we should not think of performing one before the other although human logic will 
definitely do them one at a time in sequence therefore the process because all of them are on the same level of importance the process may be done in this manner we may go through the process in this way take 3.2 which is what we have here and multiply by 10 to the power of 4 then we divide the result by 2.1 and finish up by multiplying again by 10 to the power of 3 executing from left to right 3.2 multiplied by 10.4 then divide the result by 2.1 then multiply by 10.3 and I'm saying the process may be executed in that manner maybe however we may not stick slavishly to the left to right principle of execution when operations are all on the same level the most important things are one we are dividing by 2.1 only that is first and two we need to multiply by 10 to the power of 3 because all of the operations are on the same level of importance we need to be mindful that one we are actually dividing by 2.1 and we are dividing by 2.1 only and two we need to multiply by 10 to the power of 3 we have to do that in the end we may use a calculator to do the division because its use is not forbidden and also because of the prospect of an enormous decimal fraction also remember that when multiplying numbers with the same base we add the indices so it is easy to manipulate the ones with the indices together and the quote unquote flat numbers together like we have right there so we are taking the flat numbers and working with them together and also we are taking the powers of 10 and working with them together so the division process is carried out and when we are multiplying numbers that have the same base we add the indices the index of 3 plus 4 and that is equal to 7 therefore our answer is 1.5238 times 10 to the power of 7 when a strictly arithmetic problem has operations that are all on the same level of importance like one involving only multiplication and division or one that contains only addition and subtraction then we may progress from left to right performing each one like in a sequence so I'm saying if a problem has subtraction and addition they are all on the same level of importance therefore we may execute from left to right also if one has multiplication and division we may just go from left to right as long as we do not have interfering brackets however at this level we need to demonstrate an overall understanding of the reason for this then make adjustments that will cause our work to be more time efficient like in this problem where multiplying the quote unquote flat numbers we have taken the flat numbers together so we multiply the flat numbers together and we take the ones that include indices together simplifying our work so we are multiplying the flat numbers and taking the ones with the indices together simplifies our work 
So in this particular case, we just have multiplication and division. They are on the same level. Conveniently, we put the quote-unquote flat numbers together and the one that have indices together and that causes our work to be simplified. On the other hand, we could have performed this one going from left to right. But since they are on the same level, then we may do any one before the other as long as we do exactly what the problem is saying in terms of dividing when we need to divide and multiplying when we need to multiply. Because of the discussion of the previous problem, some mathematics campers may want to take the same approach, ignoring a very important bit of detail, which is that. So, on the previous slide, we had a problem that I made a mistake with by assuming that everything that follows the division sign was a part of the divisor which is not correct because of the need to avoid an error like that some mathematics campers may want to take the same approach and they will do that if they ignore a very important bit of detail which is this negative sign that we have right there we need to recognize that all of the operations are not on the same level of importance because of the existence of the subtraction sign in the presence of those multiplication signs so we have multiply multiply we have subtract therefore all of the signs are not on the same level of significance furthermore we need to make use of the fact that multiplication takes precedence over subtraction we therefore need to perform the two multiplication operation first no ignoring this negative sign which is on a different level from the multiplication signs and of course the multiplication take precedence over the subtraction therefore we will go straight ahead and do the multiplications first multiplying by 10 to the power of 3 is the same as increasing the multiplicand by 3 places of decimal and multiplying by 10 to the power of 2 is the same as increasing by 2 decimal places. In the latter, the process is direct because the multiplicand already has 2 places of decimal. It has 2 places of decimal and we are increasing by 2 places of decimal. That is direct. However, in the former, there exist only two decimal places this one in increasing by three places of decimal we need to include an extra place of decimal in the first case so we have two places of decimal and we need to increase by three one two include the zero three nice then we 1, 2, nicer. We have increased 2.43 by 3 places of decimal and 5.26 by 2 decimal places as required. We will discard the decimal points and go to the next slide to complete the subtraction process. Well, unless we have a required format that involves decimal, then as long as we have whole numbers, we do not need to include the decimal point because a decimal point is 
a mark that separates the whole number part of a number from the fractional part. If there is no fractional part, we do not need the decimal point. However, we have number formats like in information technology and also in banking that requires us to maintain decimal places. However, this is not one of those cases. Therefore, for whole numbers, we do not need to include a decimal point. And we will subtract. When adding or subtracting whole numbers, the digits have to be aligned to the right for whole numbers. Remember that for decimal fractions, then the numbers are appropriately distributed on either side of the point and the numbers are aligned in such a way that the points are vertically aligned. But with whole numbers, what do we know? The digits have to be aligned to the right. The rightmost digits have to be vertically below each other. Beginning there, the other digits are then distributed to the left. So we will begin after we have 2430. We need to have the 6, which is the rightmost digit vertically aligned with the 0. And then we just include the other digits as we move to the left. And that is how we ensure that when we are adding or subtracting whole numbers, the points are vertically aligned. We cannot take 6 from 0, so we go to the next column. Use 1 from that position and bring it to the less significant position. 2 remains and a digit from a more significant position is 10 times the digit in the less significant position. So, 1, 0. And as I said before, we are not saying that this is 10. We are saying that although or especially that it appears, just a matter of its physical appearance, we may treat it as 10. But what is important is for us to understand that the digit that we took here and we have right here here as a matter of fact we should say here this digit is 10 times the one that we have here in terms of its place value therefore if we remove 1 here it is 10 times 1 which is 10 what do we do with that 10? we add it to the digit that we have right here so 10 plus 0 is 10 so having 10 here are considering that this is 10 is in no way harmful so 10 minus 6 is equal to 4 and then 2 minus 2 is equal to 0 and we may say again take 1 here and put there maybe we should have then we would have another thing to explain but we will do that on another occasion but we do not have to go around in circles because all we are doing here is taking away 5 from 24. 5 from 24 is 19. We just put 19 down. And I'm saying, surely at this level, we did not have to go to the more significant position and remove 1. Again, we know that 5 from 24 is 19. And we just write that down. But we are not taking it for granted. In subsequent, if we encounter something like this in a subsequent presentation, then I will go straight ahead and add more detail. We will write the answer obtained on the previous slide in standard form. When writing a number in standard form, the number is written in such a way that there is only one non-zero digit in front of or to the left of the decimal point. 
that is what we have 1904 and we know that for whole numbers the point is considered to be at the extreme right so if we have a number that has no point by default the point is located to the extreme right that means all digits are to the left of that point so that is what we have and that is what we are considering remember now that when we are writing in standard form only one non-zero digit should be to the left of that decimal point therefore there should be an adjustment in the number so in order to make that adjustment we will count the number of decimal places so that we know count the number of decimal places that will represent the difference between the original number and the number written in standard form the number written in standard form and the original number what do we do count the number of decimal places that we need to adjust that number by in order that we will have only one non-zero digit to the left of that decimal point no movement yet one decimal place another decimal place three decimal places we need to adjust this number by the number is reduced or will be reduced in order to have one non-zero digit to the left of the decimal point the number is reduced by three places of decimal the number is therefore divided by 10 to the power of 3 so that is what we have now decimal point here that means this number represents this number divided by 10 to the power of 3 and if we divide the number we need to recover its original value how do we recover the original value of a number that is the result of dividing by something whatever we divided by we need to multiply by that thing and then we will have the original value so we need to recover the original value by multiplying by 10 to the power of 3 so here we have this written like this in order that we may have it written like this what do we do we would have divided this one by 10 to the power of 3 because there's a difference by 3 places of decimal dividing by 10 to the power of 3 to get this we need to recover the original by multiplying by 10 to the power of 3 like that and of course we have some rules of thumb that we may use in mathematics and one is that some students do not or sometimes they are on a speed or what and they write the wrong sign accompanying the power of 10 the sign is usually the greatest problem not the power of 10 we may consider a number that initially had a digit or a set of digits greater than zero to the left or in front of the decimal point as a large number so look at this number it has non-zero digits to the left so these numbers are considered to be large numbers any number that has non-zero digit to the left is a large number so we may consider that a number that initially had a digit or a set of digits that are non-zero digits and those non-zero digits are to the left or in front of the decimal point we consider those numbers as large numbers as a rule of thumb we may say that numbers that were initially large should be accompanied by positive powers of 10 in the end the number of decimal places by which the initial number differs from the final number will tell us the size of the power so this number is a large number because it has non-zero digits to the left of the point in the end we should have large numbers accompanied by 
positive power of 10 because it's a large number also 1 2 3 it's a positive it's a 3 so the number of decimal places by which we quote unquote change so if we change by 3 it is a 3 if the number is initially large then it is a positive so it is a positive 3 here is one more of our favorites in which we make use of the fact that the square root and the power of a half are equivalent use 0 0.0004 with the square root and use 10 to the power of negative 6 with the power of a half being flexible can really help when working on your mathematics problems because it is good if we recognize or we know for a fact and are willing to make use of the fact that the square root and the power of a half are equivalent we will therefore use the square root with 0 0.004 and use the half power with 10 to the power of negative 6 because we have index here we put the power of a half with the index for convenience and then we just say the square root of this one rewrite it as just the square root of 0 0.0004 so take the number, take the square root of it, and take the indices and manipulate those. Making use of the fact that the square root and the power of a half are the same. Apply the square root to this one and apply the power of a half to the one that has the index. Remember that for a rational square root, the number of decimal places in the answer will be a half of the number of decimal places in the problem so if this one can actually work or it is a definite square root then the number of decimal places that we have here when we take the square root of this we will have half of the number of those decimal places so we have one two three four that means the square root if it is a definite square root the square root of this number will have only two decimal places because four decimal places a half of four is two the square root will have two decimal places and of course we know the square root of four is two remember that for a rational square root the number of decimal places in the answer will be a half of the number of decimal places in the problem also we know already that the square root of 4 is equal to 2 when we have for that part so half of the number of decimal places and the square root of 4 is equal to 2 when we have a power raised to another power we multiply the indices so the problem is simplified very quickly to 0 0.02 multiplied by 10 to the power of negative 3 one two three four square root should have only two decimal places square root of four is two two goes there there's nothing to it we may rewrite 0 0.02 in standard form remembering that a number that has no non-zero digit to the left of the decimal point will be called small and will be accompanied by a negative power of 10 in the end here we are writing this 0 0.02 in standard form and what do we know we know that a number with no non-zero digit to the left of the decimal point is a small number and will be accompanied by a negative power of 10 but 
what do we have? one two decimal places therefore the power needs to be two and negative for a small number so negative for a small number and two for the number of decimal places by which this number differs from this we maintain our 10 to the power of negative 3 and what do we do next multiply numbers with the same base at the indices when multiplying numbers that have the same base we add the indices also we need to be reminded that when we add numbers that have the same sign we accumulate the values and the answer will have the same sign as the numbers so when we add these two we will add they have the same sign we'll add the two with the three and we get five because they have the same sign the answer will have the same sign as these two numbers accumulate the value and apply the same sign so two times 10 to the power of negative 5 adding the indices with the same sign accumulating the values and the answer will have the same sign as the numbers that we have added we could have rewritten 0 0.0004 using the same principle or the same premise as we did for 0 0.02 on the previous slide so we are rewriting this 0 0.0004 what do we do we know that we consider numbers that do not have any non zero digit to the left of the decimal point as small so this is a small number it will be accompanied by a negative power of 10 in the end and the number of decimal places that is required to write this in standard form 1 2 3 4 we know that small number negative power number of decimal places 4 negative 4 so we have 4 times 10 to the negative 4 times 10 to the negative 6 and we know also that when we multiply numbers with the same base we will add the indices so multiply numbers that have the same base by adding the indices negative 4 plus negative 6 when we add numbers that have the same sign we accumulate their values and the answer will have the same sign as in numbers that we have added this 4 is as it is and then when we use square root with 4 and the power of a half with the index then what will the result be so we take the square root conveniently here and also making use of the fact that square root is the same as the power of a half so we put the half power right there and what do we know when we have a power raised to another power we multiply the indices the square root of 4 is 2 and when we have a number with an index that is raised to another power we multiply the indices square root of 4 is 2 and a half of negative 10 is negative 5 so we have there 2 times 10 to the power of negative 5 for the next three sections all we need to do is write a particular number as specified in the statement of the problem we did not have to solve a problem to arrive at 64.498 it was given to us freely all we need to do is first write it correctly to the nearest whole number that is what we will do first first we need to write it correct to the nearest whole number and the nearest whole number is that 
part of the whole number that is the nearest to the decimal point or immediately to the left of the decimal point. So we have first we need to write it correct to the nearest whole number. The nearest whole number is the one immediately to the left of the decimal point. There. Check the digit that is next in order of significance, the one that is immediately to the right. We know that by now the one immediately to the right is next in order of significance going down of course it is a 4 we do not add 1 to 4 because this one is not greater than or equal to 5 we do not add 1 to the digit in question so the 4 goes back as it is the digit to the right is not affected which is 6 so when we consult the next one in line, if it is not greater than or equal to 5, we do not add 1 to the digit in question. We need only whole number, a decimal fraction with or without value is not necessary. We are writing correct to the nearest whole number and writing correct to the nearest whole number means that we do not need any decimal fraction or any form of fraction therefore we can forget about decimal fractions or any fraction as a matter of fact now we may write the number correct to three significant figures three significant figures locate the third digit in order of significance and that is done by counting from the left the most significant digit three significant figures we are going at find the third digit in order of significance by counting from the left one two three right there and it's a matter of approximation again therefore we need to check the digit that is next in order of significance going down which is the one to the right because the digit is 9 which is greater than 5 as a matter of fact if it were equal to 5 then we would have added 1 to 4 also but we are sure that we need to add 1 to 4 which is the digit in question because the one that we are investigating here is surely greater than 5 so we add 1 to the 4 if it were equal to 5 we would still add 1 to the 4 to get 5 the other digits to the left are not affected and return as they are As long as the digit that we are considering is less than 5, we do not add 1 to the digit in question. The third significant figure in this case is 4. So in this particular case, the digit in question is this one, which is a 4. The digit that we have here is not less than 5 because it is not less than 5 we add 1 to this 4 if it were less than 5 then we would not have added 1 to the 4 finish up by writing the number correct to two decimal places for two decimal places locate the second decimal place two digits to the right of the decimal point so this time it is not significant figure where we start at the first non-zero digit to the left in this particular case we will begin at the first decimal place which is one digit to the right of the decimal point so there we have two decimal places 
beginning at that digit that is to the right of the decimal point check the digit that is next in order of significance which is the one to the right which is an 8 in this case because it is greater than or equal to 5 then we will add 1 to the digit in question and the digit in question is that 9 that is located in the second place of decimal since we are writing correct to two decimal places so the digit in question will be that digit in the second decimal place so we add 1 to that 9 9 plus 1 is equal to 10 we will put 0 and 1 will be carried to the next significant digit and we will have 5 so 9 because this is greater than or equal to 5 we add 1 to the 9 9 plus 1 is 10 0 carry 1 1 plus 4 is 5 and then after that the other digits are not affected and return as they are the trailing zero is necessary in this particular case to complete the designated number of decimal places and the number of decimal places that were suggested by the statement of the problem is two so two decimal places we cannot throw away this zero because it does not contribute to the value of the number it does not contribute to the value of the number but we cannot throw it away because it is contributing to the required number of decimal places and do not forget in the case that we have 9 plus 1 0 carry 1 so we'll have to do that like in normal arithmetic